Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Infrastructure Update. It is the 6th of December, and as we are now in December, um, we're going to get more and more Christmassy every single week. It is actually a pretty quiet week, but before we get to the updates, as always, if this is useful, please go ahead and give this a like, comment, and subscribe. New videos, actually pretty quiet for me as well. I've been spending a lot of time creating a whole new set of Pluralsight courses around the architect and DevOps engineer certs. But I did put out this kind of one hour video on migrating to Azure, thinking about what we need to plan and then actually the Azure Migrate tooling that's free as part of Azure. So on to what's new, again, very, very quiet. So on the compute side, really just the change to how Azure Batch works in terms of your quotas. So before it would ignore any VM specific quota and just look to the overall quota for your subscription. They've now changed this so that in addition to the overall quota you have for virtual CPUs, as you deploy your Azure Batch and you pick the specific VM SKU that you're using, it will check that set of quotas as well. On the storage side, a new feature actually in preview is this Azure Storage Blob inventory capability. So it is preview, it's only available in a couple of regions, but if we jump over and take a look, what it's essentially going to do is on a daily basis, I can configure for my storage account to run these inventories. So I created a storage account in Canada because it's one of the locations that has this feature turned on. So if we actually scroll down under Blob Services, we see this new Blob Inventory Preview capability. So what we actually do is we go ahead and we create a number of rules. So if I look at the existing rule, it's just basically all Blob types, block, page, and append. I could add particular prefixes I'm looking for. I can specify do I want versions and snapshots included. And then what it will do is, again, on that daily basis, it will trigger an inventory. Now where it creates that is in the container that I've actually created the rule for, it will create that report. So if I go and actually look at my container, we'll see it will create a hierarchy. So I can see it the year, month, and then the date. And here, I can actually see when it run the rule, and I can see kind of a manifest, and then this default rule, all blobs.csv. And if we actually look at that file, it's just an inventory of the content of that container. So here I can see, well, what is actually the image name? So I'm really looking at these bottom ones here. I can see the creation time, the modified time, I can see the size. It shows me the type of object it is. It shows me the archive, hot, cool tier, so the tier it's in. And I can even see well, when that tiering changed. As you can see, I changed it fairly recently just so I'd have some data in different tiers. So essentially, it's just a free service that's gonna go and look at the contents of our storage account, our various blobs, and let us kind of track exactly what's happening to them. So they're kind of free, nice little inventory capability. Again, only a couple of regions, Canada Central is one of them, that's why I created that account. But you could go and create a storage account in Canada uh, and play around with it. Not really infrastructure, but kind of some changes that happened is, so Azure Synapse went generally available. There, there were many different features to Synapse. So remember, Azure Synapse is all about taking, well, they had kind of the data warehouse capability, and then there were transformation services like uh, Databricks. Then there were things like Data Factory to handle the source to sync movement of the data and all the various connectors. So what Synapse did is it brought all of that together. It brought the Azure Data Lake storage together as part of a single workspace, and it, it handled all the networking, the security for us, and really added its own interface to that. It added the ability to have serverless compute, so now I could actually do direct queries against my data lake without using my provisioned resources. I had this serverless SQL capability. So it's now gone GA. And the only reason I really mention it as part of an infrastructure update is it does have kind of great integrations with things like PrivateLink. It has a managed VNet. 
So if I do have my resources only available via private endpoints, it can still use those. It has a managed VNet and it will go and create the private endpoints through there. They also announced this Azure Purview. So Azure Purview is actually about, hey, I have data in Azure, on-prem, in other clouds. And what Purview is all about is it has connectors you add to all of the different places where you have data. It doesn't copy the data down. It runs scans against the data where it is and then enables me to classify the data. It has machine learning models that are built in. I can add my own to auto classify. For example, find social security numbers, find credit cards, find things that are kind of identifiable data. It will classify all the data, but it will also kind of track lineage. So it will show me, hey, this data came through here, it went through this transformation, and then it got stored over here. So it's really this single place to go where I'll be able to see all of my data, centrally classify it, understand what was the life cycle of that data. And it will actually hook into Synapse. So Synapse has a preview connector for Azure Purview. So kind of new services there. It's free right now while it's in preview, but obviously there will be costs based on the scanning it performs, based on those machine learning models to actually do that classification uh, once it releases. Miscellaneous, so Azure Monitor, uh, now has a solution for Windows Virtual Desktop. This will give me things like a summary of the host pool and the health status, helps me troubleshoot problems, um, really just gives me overall utilization of the resources. So now we have kind of that solution for Windows Virtual Desktop. Azure Security Center released their November 2020 update. If we actually go and look at the update, what we'll see here is we can kind of go through really new recommendations around kind of the Azure security set of benchmarking. So it's got those capabilities kind of added into it, whole new set there. The new NIST SP800 171R2 to the regulatory compliance dashboard has been added. Now filtering capabilities, so those nice little filter pills we see across many of the um, services in Azure. So now it has those. I can actually go and filter in on the recommendations and overall kind of auto provisioning. So when I turn this on, it will automatically go and hook these types of services like Azure VMs into Azure Security Center. So things like that log analytics agent and now the Azure policy add-on for Kubernetes and the Microsoft dependency agent that enables us to do the mapping of well, this component is talking to that component so I can work at that complete dependency. Uh, it's now going to support those capabilities. Secure score can now be continuously exported out. And then system updates should be installed on your machines now has sub recommendations. So rather than just saying, hey, there should be updates, it's actually showing me the specific updates that I'm actually missing. And so now these policy changes as well. So some kind of uh, cool stuff coming in there. And then actually the next update is also, go back to that, um, the Azure um, Site Recovery. They have their November roll up as well. So again, really this is about changes to their overall agent status, for example. Let's see if it actually will load, there we go. So if we go and look here, really this is focused on some sort of ch fixes to the overall solution. So we've got new versions of the Site Recovery Unified Setup and the Mobility Agent, a new version for the open virtualization format. So this is the appliance we download for VMware or physical machines that actually goes and does the discovery in an agentless fashion that then builds into things like our Azure Migrate and our, our replication solutions. Then new providers for Hyper-V virtual machines and then some additional disaster recovery support for some Linux distributions, uh, both virtual and physical. So a number of kind of different things added there. But that's really it. It really is a very quiet week. Obviously, it was Thanksgiving last week in the United States, so everyone's still kind of uh, full up on that food, I think. And generally, December is quieter anyway, so uh, a bit less for us to worry about. But I hope that was useful. As always, any questions, please comment below. And until next week, uh, please take care of yourselves. Stay safe.